and very much so. As a gay man, it is crucial to know the difference between stories invented by humans and reality. The same ability is also crucial for scientific research. When I was young, I was told that all boys are attracted to girls, and I believed that. It took me a long time to realize that this is just a story invented by humans, and that the reality is that some boys love other boys, and I happen to be one of them. It is a great wisdom to accept reality as it is, even if it contradicts the stories most people believe. Similarly, many people say that there is a great big man in the sky who gets very angry if two men love one another. But this is just another imaginary story people invented. If two men love one another and they don't harm anyone, what could possibly be wrong with that? No big man in the sky becomes angry about it. The only ones who get angry are all kinds of priests and rabbis. Scientific research is based on exactly the same insight. As a scientist, I constantly ask myself, what is reality? Forget all the stories people invented about the world. What is the truth about the world? As a gay man, I learned that if reality collides with the story people tell, it is best to believe reality. I think this lesson has made me a much better scientist. Science certainly helped me to accept my sexuality as it is. People often say that it is unnatural to be gay, that nature wanted males to love females and females to love males, and gay people break the laws of nature. Scientific research taught me that this is utter nonsense. There is just no such thing as unnatural behavior. Anything that exists is by definition also natural. People just can't break the laws of nature. The laws of nature are not like traffic laws. With traffic laws, the government says that you cannot drive more than 100 kilometers per hour. And then people break the law and drive 120 kilometers per hour, and a traffic policeman stops them and gives them a ticket. The laws of nature say that you cannot move faster than the speed of light. That does not mean that if you drive at twice the speed of light, a galactic traffic policeman will stop you and give you a ticket. It is just impossible to do it. If you somehow succeed in driving faster than the speed of light, it just means that we probably don't understand the true laws of nature, and that in certain situations, it is very natural to move faster than light. If something exists, it's by definition natural. If two women love each other, it means that this is natural, that no law of nature prohibits it. And the fact is that homosexuality is quite common among many animals, not just among humans. For example, among our closest relatives in nature, the chimpanzees, homosexual, homosexual behavior is quite common. Most sexual activities among chimpanzees are not done in order to procreate little chimps. Rather, chimpanzees use sex to cement political alliances, to establish intimacy, and to diffuse tensions. Is there anything unnatural about it? The idea that sex exists only for the purpose of procreation is complete nonsense invented by priests and rabbis. In truth, our concepts natural and unnatural are not taken from biology, they are taken from Christian theology. The theological meaning of natural is in accordance with the intentions of the God who created nature. Christian theologians argued that God created the human body, intending each limb and organ to serve a particular purpose. If we use our limbs and organs for that purpose, 
envisioned by God, this is natural activity. To use them differently than God intends is unnatural. But all this is mythology. God didn't create humans and other animals. They evolved by natural selection. And evolution just has no purpose. Organs have not evolved with a particular purpose. And the way organs are used by animals and humans is in constant flux. There is hardly a single organ in the human body that only does the job its prototype did when it first appeared hundreds of millions of years ago. Organs evolve to perform a particular function, but once they exist, it is totally natural to adapt them for other usages. Feathers first appeared to keep ancient reptiles warm. Now birds use them to fly. Is that unnatural? Fingers appeared to help our ancestors climb trees. Now we use them to play the piano. Is that unnatural? Mouths appeared to enable organisms to take food into their bodies. Now we use them to speak and to kiss. Is that unnatural? Similarly, sex first appeared for purpose of procreation, but now we use it to establish intimacy and friendship and relationships. Is there anything unnatural about that? Well, throughout history, nudity killed very few people, but religious fanaticism killed millions. So before we worry so much about nudity in gay parades, we had better worry about religious extremism.